Sri Lanka is an island nation in South Asia. It is a small country with an ancient culture and civilization. The chronicle and recorded history of two and a half millennia. From very early times, Sri Lanka was well known for spices and gems. It had established trade and cultural relations with many ancient civilizations in South Asia and Europe. Throughout history, it has been known by different names. Greeks called it Taprobane. The Arabs called it Serendib, from which the English word Serendipity derived. Portuguese called it Ceylao, Dutch called it Ceylon, and the British called it Ceylon. Sri Lanka is the ancient name meaning the resplendent island. The Greek astronomer Ptolemy, who is regarded as the father of modern geography, compiled this map of Sri Lanka in the second century AD, which he called Taprobane. This map was of such accuracy that it remained in use for over 16 centuries. This is a modern map of Sri Lanka. We first visit Anuradhapura. Anuradhapura was the ancient capital of Sri Lanka. It has now been declared a World Heritage Site by the United Nations Cultural Organization. Anuradhapura was founded in 500 BC. It is acclaimed as the greatest monastic city of the ancient world and has served as the royal capital of 113 kings over one and a half millennia. This is Mehintale in close proximity to Anuradhapura. It is regarded as the cradle of Buddhist civilization in Sri Lanka. Buddhism was introduced to Sri Lanka in the 3rd century BC. Asoka, the great Indian emperor, after he became a Buddhist, sent several missionaries abroad. Apostle Mahinda, who was Emperor Asoka's own son, who had ordained as a Buddhist monk, brought Buddhism to Sri Lanka. It was here at Mihintale that the Apostle Mahinda first met the Sri Lankan king, Deva Nampiyatissa, on a full moon day in the month of June in 300 BC, and officially introduced Buddhism to Sri Lanka. Mahinda is said to have posed a riddle to the king to test his capacity for instruction. Pointing to a tree close by, the venerable Mahinda asked the king for its name. The king replied that it was a mango tree. Are there any other mango trees besides this one? asked Mahinda. There are many other mango trees, replied the king. And are there any other trees beside this mango tree and other mango trees? There are many other trees, replied the king. Besides the other mango trees and those trees which are not mango, are there any other trees? Yes, replied the king, there is this mango tree. Thou has a shrewd wit, O king, said Venerable Mahinda. The spot where this Socrates-like dialogue took place is marked by a rock slab. Apostle Mahinda resided at Mihintale 
since the royal city of Anuradhapura was unsuitable for monastic life. The king built 68 rock caves or cells at Mehintali for Mahinda and his retinue. A stairway with 1,840 steps made of granite slabs leading to the summit was built. During the Posong season, that is the full moon in June, thousands of lay devotees and monks ascend Mihintale to pay their respects to Apostle Mahinda, whose relics are enshrined in the stupa. During Poson, the Mahintale stupa is very well lit and illuminated with thousands of lights. This is Tuparama. Tuparama is the oldest Dagaba or stupa on the island. The commonly used English term for stupa or Dagaba is pagoda, which in fact is derived from the word Dagaba. It is recorded that the right collarbone of Lord Buddha is enshrined here. It was built in the third century before Christ by King Devanam Pirtisa. This is Sri Mahabodhi or the sacred bow tree in Anuradhapura. This Bodhi tree is a sapling of the Bodhi tree that was in Buddha Gaya, India, under which Buddha attained enlightenment. It was brought to Sri Lanka in the second century BC by Venerable Sangamitta, the daughter of King Asoka and sister of Mahinda. She had ordained as a Buddhist nun. The golden railing around the Bodhi tree is visible in the rear. This Bodhi tree is over 2,200 years old and is the oldest historically documented, documented tree in the world. This is Ruan Valley Sayer. This great stupa was built by King Dutugamanu in the 2nd century BC. It is a dhagaba consisting of a dome topped with a pinnacle standing on a square base. Within the dome is a chamber containing sacred relics of the Buddha. Ruan Valley is a huge monument measuring 335 feet in height with a circumference of 942 feet. The premises cover five acres of land. It is mentioned in the Mahavansa, the great chronicle, that Buddhist delegates not only from several states in North India, but also from Iran and Afghanistan and Alexandria in Greece attended the inauguration of this Dagaba in the 2nd century BC. It is also recorded that in the 1st century AD, King Bhatika Tissa Abhaya sent an emissary to Rome and obtained corals to adorn this stupa. These are the ruins of the Brazen Palace of Lova Mahapaya. It was a dwelling for the Buddhist monks. It was built by King Dutugamanu over 2,200 years ago. It was a 10-story building with over 1,000 rooms. But today, only the 1,600 stone columns of the ground floor remain. It was called the Brazen Palace since the roof was covered with copper plates. This is Jetavana Rame. 
It is the largest stupa in Sri Lanka with a 367 foot base on each side. It is 400 feet in height and its perimeter encloses 8 acres. It is the second largest monument in the world, second only to the pyramids of Egypt. This was built in the 3rd century AD. This is the Samadhi Buddha statue. It shows the Buddha in a state of samadhi or deep meditation portraying metta or his boundless compassion. It is considered a unique piece of sculpture in the world renowned for its artistic refinement. This huge granite statue of the Buddha at Aukana carved out of solid rock in the standing position on a lotus pedestal was built during the reign of King Dathusena in the 5th century AD it stands 472 feet tall and remains undamaged up to this day the flawless unbroken pleats of the robe the perfectly erect posture and the indentation at the waist bear testimony to the skills skills of the sculptor who executed this masterpiece of rock carving it is said that when it rains water dripping from the tip of the nose falls right between the two feet This is Kootam Pokuna or the twin ponds. They are two impressive pools used by the ancient monks for bathing nearly 2000 years ago. The inner walls of the pool were paved with dressed stone. An underground channel supplied water from a tank. This is Isurumunya rock temple dating back from the 3rd century BC Isurumunya has been well known for its rock carvings from time to time craftsmen added various sculptures here The Isurumunya lovers is a famous sculpture carved in the 6th century AD Our next stop is Dambulla which is also a world heritage site dating back to the 1st century BC this is the most impressive cave temple in Sri Lanka it has five caves caves under a vast overhanging rock carved with a drip line to keep the interiors dry inside the caves the ceilings are painted with intricate patterns of religious images following the contours of the rock there are images of lord buddha and the bodhisattvas
This is Sigiriya, the rock citadel, which is also a world heritage site. Sigiriya was created by King Kasyapa, who reigned in the 5th century from the year 477 to 495 AD. The summit of this almost inaccessible rock is 600 feet above the surrounding area and was the setting for a courtly paradise of elegant pavilions amid gardens and pools. It is often referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. The name Sigri means the lion rock. The rock was transformed into a recumbent lion by the addition of a head and four legs of which only the paws remain now. The terrace gardens slope down to the boulder gardens and then to the geometrically laid out water gardens with running water and fountains, pools and ponds, aquatic flowers and birds, and tropical trees. The entire water garden is in a walled enclosure. These fountains are fed by water under gravitational pressure from the artificial Sigiriya lake. Symmetrically perforated limestone plates fashion their sprouts. These fountains operate even today, bearing testimony to an outstanding technology which is 1,500 years old. These are the world-famous Sigiriya frescoes dating back to the 5th century AD. We next go to Polonarua, which is also now a World Heritage Site. Polonarua was the medieval capital of Sri Lanka from the 11th century AD. After the old capital, Anuradhapura was abandoned due to foreign invasions. This is Galvihara in Polonarua. Galvihara is one of the most famous sites in Sri Lanka. It consists of three figures of Lord Buddha carved out of a solid granite rock. One is a standing Buddha, the other two are an upright Buddha and a reclining Buddha. The reclining Buddha is 46 feet in height. This is the seated Buddha at Galvihara, Polonnaruwa. This is the reclining Buddha statue at Galvihara in Polonnaruwa. This is the statue of King Parakramabahu the first who ruled at Polonarua. It is a huge 12th century rock sculpture. A barefoot figure stands out of the rock from which he was carved. 
His broad face has a look of seriousness and he is holding a sacred manuscript from which he appears to be reading. This is a pond carved out of a rock in the shape of a lotus in bloom. It was used by monks who resided in the monastery here. This is Watadage, which means circular shrine of the sacred tooth relic. The sacred tooth relics of the Buddha were enshrined here. It represents some of the finest sculptures of the period. In the foreground is the intricately carved moonstone, and on either side are the guard stones. Moonstones and guard stones adorn all shrines in ancient Sri Lanka. We next visit Kandy, which has also been declared a World Heritage Site. Kandy is the famous city of Sri Lankan history, culture, religion and pageantry. The Kandyan Kingdom was the last independent state in Sri Lanka. It withstood the onslaught of three invading European armies of the Portuguese, the Dutch and the British for over two centuries. Kandy Lake provides an attractive focal point for the Dalda Maligava, the temple of the sacred tooth. This, this shrine houses the most sacred Buddhist relic, the tooth relic of the Buddha. The tooth relic was a symbol of the monarchy. They were first installed in Anuradhapura, then in Polonnaruwa, and finally they were enshrined here in Kandy in the 16th century. In the center right, the gilded roof of the main shrine room is conspicuous. This is a panoramic view of the Dalada Maligava, the temple of the sacred tooth. Kandy is also the venue of the Asala Perhara, by far the most colourful pageant of Asia held in August each year in honour of the tooth relics. As the pageant of the Asala Perhara unfolds through ten nights each year, the city takes on the air of a torch-lit dreamland. With a hundred or more colourfully caprisoned elephants, drummers and dancers, the chieftains in the rare colourful trappings of the old kingdom participate in this pageant. Each year, thousands of tourists from all over the world visit Kandy to witness this grand spectacle. This is Sri Pada Mountain. The British called it 
Adam speak. It is believed that Buddha visited this summit and left impressions of his feet here. It is a place of worship and also a tourist attraction. It is 7,500 feet high and the route of the climb is four miles long. This is a bird's eye view of Colombo, the modern capital city. This is a view of Sri Lanka from space. The landmass to the top left is the subcontinent of India.